Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, hour number three on Tuesday, July 8th with Tim Alexander. And of course, it's open lines, 800-259-5791. And I'm going to open up this question again. If you have a really good geopolitical question or statement with a Christian point of view, um, you may win, depending on whether I, whether I judge it as being excellent, a uh, cell phone protector. And this is a uh, sleeve that will actually block the radiation so it doesn't go toward your body. It goes away. Still allow your cell phone to connect to the cell tower, but won't blast you with radiation. Pretty neat. The normal yeah. cost is slightly under $20. That's without shipping. And you'll receive it free if you have a really excellent geopolitical question. It can't just be an average one, like just to call in. It has to be a really good question, and it has to be from a Christian point of view. Uh, if it doesn't have those two factors, it doesn't qualify. 800-259-5791. And I'm going to keep on putting this up because I want people to know this is not just our program for us to rant on things. It's their program. It's a program so they can call their friends and say, listen to me, I'm going to be on air. I'm going to call into the show and make an important statement about in my state or my country. By the way, this show, both live and rebroadcast, is, is listened around the world. To give you an idea how far Genesis broadcasts, first off, we're on ABC affiliates. We're on stations that contract with us. We have micro-broadcasters all over the place and private stations. We have... Uh, the phone apps all the way over the world, an iPhone and Android. We have KU Band Satellite. We personally and privately contract North and South America on our first hour of the program. We are on Dish Network in Europe all three hours, Monday to Friday, and that includes Britain, United Kingdom, all of Europe, North Africa, Russia, China, and the entire Middle East. And, of course, we have Listen Live lines. They can listen live anywhere in the world. They can have rebroadcast. We, of course, have the ability for them to download the programs, listen on phone apps. There's just almost no excuse why they can't hear the program. But they have to understand it's not our program, it's God's program, it's your program. And it means that if you want to speak to a people in your state or country, put out a notice. I'm going to call into the show on such and such a date. You can even grab the audio, take out a clip, put it in your news blog, uh, say listen to the program because I'm going to call in with another good question. You then have a tremendous voice, a megaphone, to make a statement or talk about whether it's your local medical community, the geopolitical situation. Uh, and uh, you don't have to agree with us, but you have to be agreeable. We don't have people coming on ranting or saying nasty things, especially about us who are here to do the will of the Most High God. But we will, or to attack other hosts, by the way. Uh, I don't need to attack hosts. I just need to attack ideas. <laughs> ideas are much better than attacking people that you may not agree with or don't agree on a specific day because either don't have their information or you think they're wrong. Yeah, uh, but, but I, I want to people... say not, and bad things about Obama and Hillary and people like that. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I, I had an interesting email last week that someone warned me that I should listen to like one of my guests that I have on that's much more soft-spoken about things like that. And I have these words for you. I'm going to speak the truth until the last bit of oxygen leaves my lungs and my spirit leaves to be with Most High God. I'm not going to tone things down so I don't anger the boss, Mr. Abominator, so he tries to kill me with a drone strike from a Hellfire missile. I really don't give a rat's behind in which manner I die because it's, it's up, not up to Obama or anybody else. It's up to the Most High God in which manner I will leave. Uh, and uh, as, as Jesus said, I'm not going to lengthen my days one or shorten them. If I listen to him, it'll be as long as it needs to be, which will be longer than it, sh than it otherwise would be if I don't listen to him. It'll be short. My days will be shortened, just like Hezekiah asked for his days to be lengthened. He, obviously, God had some codicils to that miracle he did for him. So people need to understand that if you want to live longer, you got to listen to God, whether it's taking nutraceuticals, reducing electropollution, getting your geopolitical and your financial house in order, and realizing, yes, they're going to crash the dollar and they're going to cause gold and silver to go up. Yes, you do need to get prepper supplies because the world is getting crazy. And yes, you need to be knowing your neighbors and you need to get into home church where you have a group of people to protect you. And you need to also start speaking out in church. Don't just let your pastor get away with being afraid that the 501c3 is going to lose his status if he doesn't touch on touchy ob subjects. And don't worry about disrupting family get-togethers by saying things that are inflammatory. It's your purposes. It says we are the stench of death to those who are not saved. And don't assume because people are nicer than you that they're saved. They're not. Salvation means you've given your sins, your curses, your evil things that have been done by you or to you to the Most High God, and he takes them away. 
And when you start giving your good things that God has given you as well, then he makes you a new person. And uh, some real nasty people are going to get into heaven. And some really nice people aren't going to make it. And that's a shock to people. They, they say, no, that, that can't be. That can't be. Well, yes, unfortunately, that's the way it is. Uh, so I want people to understand that the world is the same thing. We've got some people who really think America is wonderful. Yes, there's some wonderful things about America, but it's lost its way. We have, oh, sure things, we have lots of things about Israel, and they call it Israel, but it's not Israel. It's lost its way. And again, Jesus is going to come back. It says in the Bible in Psalms that, you know, they shall they rent their garments, they shall cry out for the one that they have pierced. They're talking about God in the flesh, Jesus, Yeshua. They're talking about the fact that we are not having peace because we wouldn't listen to the Prince of Peace 2,000 years ago. And he's coming back, and it's going to be a world that's going to be in hellfire mess. And if you're just a supercomputer and you had no perception of God, you're just going to crunch all the numbers and you're a, you know, the quantum supercomputer, you know, of all known knowledge and all social networks and all history on earth. And you just go crunch and the, the computer would spit out a little ticker tape and said, mankind has 386 days left. <laughs> the end. I mean, that's where we're at. I mean, if you don't believe in God, you're as dumb as a, as a load of bricks because what's going to happen is we're terminal. Human beings are screwing up the world real we bad. We have a, a, a conversions of things happening now, and um, it, it really is getting bad. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, this, I, I, this, you got to be honest here with yourself. You know, stop playing games and pretending you're going to live for generations and everything like it says in the Bible, I think in Timothy, that everything shall proceed like the days before, and they shall send scoffers in those days to scoff at you to say, oh, come on. Things will be fine. Yeah, there'll be wars, and we're still going to recover. And still, America, we're the most powerful nation. This sounds like ancient Israel, but guess what? When you got air raids hitting Tel Aviv with missiles and they're knocking them out, when you got the Israelis mobilizing tanks toward Gaza, they're getting ready to invade Gaza. And these are, you know, current news items. When you got the Russians trying their best not to get sucked in by us, trying to start a war in Ukraine, and Slavyansk and Donetsk and the other places being shelled to death, killing children, women, and I remember these. Uh, Donbass kids putting out selfies trying to say, please don't let them kill us. Please don't let them kill cute well, kids. Well, you know, you, you have to, uh, uh, the other side of that is the report that came out from the Rand Corporation, which is a top Pentagon think tank, very connected especially to the U.S. Air Force. And their advice to the coup junta in the Ukraine was to kill everyone in eastern Ukraine that even remotely disagrees with them, to take everyone else and put them in concentration camps for a period of time, right. and then uh, to make sure that uh, if anybody was connected to the ones they were killed, they would lose all their holdings, they would lose their land, their apartment, their homes, whatever, and right. then eventually release them. Um, that is shall we say, demonic, right out of hell. Uh, it also is another gauntlet being thrown down to Putin, who has been trying his best to avoid being sucked into this. He knows uh, it's a trap, but uh, he, has to, he has to act very soon, because yeah. if he doesn't, if the genocide really uh, kicks off, his own people, the knives will come out. He he won't survive, uh, either as president, and he probably won't survive in terms of living. Uh, yeah. And the Russians yeah. uh, are, are not the type of people that will allow uh, their yeah. citizens, their, their people, uh, Russian-speaking people in what was Russia until a few years ago, to be um, slaughtered. Exactly. And, in other uh, words, uh, Putin, uh, Putin's going to move by the middle of the month, it's my guess. We have a week before Russia moves on Kiev. One week. I can tell and you a, a scenario that uh, is, is, is interesting. When, when we, we come, come back, back, we'll hear from Tim. Uh, again, if you have an important question, comment, and uh, geopolitical from a Christian point of view, again, we have to look at this soberly because this ties in, believe it or not, with your health, with your finances, because war is always the outcome when the bankers have finally decided it's the last step before. I guess I put out the cheese at microwave because we've got three callers. Now here's the rules of the road. Um, we don't want it going off in a rabbit trail. We want it relevant to what we're talking about. So we have some people with some different issues they want to talk about. 
So Mark and Oregon, I know you, you want to talk about Planet X, but how could you talk it tied in your question today with our current events, what's going on in Israel, what's happening to the world? What, what would be your question? Yes, relative to Planet X, Dr. Bill and Tim, I'm really... I'm talking about relative to our current events. In other words, what Tim yes, is talking I'm, I'm about with to, the yes, impending sir. war and with the impending I'm, collapse of the dollar and the right. geological and, and environmental collapse yes. that's happening. How would you tie that together? Yes, tie it all together. Uh, the whole overall global Illuminati agenda of uh, Satan as far as its rate of increase in speed, and that rate of increase is increasing all the time now, measured by not only the number of events, but the actual size of the events and their synergistic uh, workings within the agenda that's already been implemented. And as we that's extrapolate, true. we see it's going faster and faster, and I believe that Planet X is the reason for this. We have the Vatican infrared uh, Lucifer. Yeah, you're listening to our program and other segments talking about that. So, yeah, in, in fact, the ancient, you know, if you actually if you realize that it's a mini solar system, okay, the red dwarf star, it's not a brown dwarf, by the way, it's a red dwarf because it has a high, strong magnetic field. With five planets and, around it? Is that right, Dr. Well, is there, is, I don't know if I would say five, but I know that uh, one of those is supposed to be the planet Nibiru. The fact is, it's called, there's other names for it, Nemesis, uh, Heraculibus, there's all kinds of names in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. And this is known by Moses, it was known by the ancient high priest, they knew that this object returned, which is a red dwarf, to the solar system in a highly uh, hyper-ecliptic orbit, which is below the southern plane of the ecliptic for the all the planets that rotate right, around the right sun. Right behind the sun right now, right, Dr. Bill? Right, and, and so this is coming in, and of course a lot of the extreme changes to uh, the, uh, the planets that contain a magma core, there's increasing uh, changes to volcanism, Four. earthquakes, etc., and even to the activity of the sun. The sun is strange. It's putting out more ultraviolet light, but there's less sunspots. And we're in the middle also of an evolving, uh, I think it's M or X class uh, solar flare as well. It's happening right now. <clears throat> so what we have to realize is, yeah, it's a driving force. I'm not going to put dates on it, but I can tell you the movement of hyper-elliptical comets that come in from deep space in the Oort cloud, which is 0.73 light years out, it's a long way out, uh, that take thousands of years to get here. They've been pushed in by this object. Uh, and it's also found other planet-like objects that are pretty big, some of them ten times larger than Earth, out in deep space out in this area. So mo most people don't realize that this is probably a driving factor and they have more knowledge than they're sharing with us. Well, of course, uh, Dr. Bill, but relating back to actually the, the quickness of very larger and larger events that is occurring right now, we have the potential for various types of global whatever you would want to call it that would translate into chaos uh, and yeah, the death and, and, of, of many, many people. It's all Well, they'll, they'll chaperone them. They'll, they'll try to control it. You see, they're trying to control the chaos by releasing plagues or starting wars. The war is actually probably a cover for the fact that they won't not only want to get more control of the population before a natural disaster happens, because, <clears throat> as I said before, you can't have a nuclear war. All you need to do is be in an underground shelter for about two weeks. You don't need to be down there for 20 years or 2,000 years or 200 years. Uh, like a lot of these shelters are designed to literally be able to stay, keep you down there for centuries. <clears throat> so what we're dealing with is something that they're preparing for is much worse than a nuclear war. Uh, the second thing we want to understand is that the geopolitical issues are driven spiritually, spiritually by demonic powers that control all the corporations on earth, all the high priesthoods, all the secret agencies. They're all linked together. Absolutely. And they're all linked together. And people don't understand there's a con conception which occurred back at the time of the 1930s in, in Germany, which is a conception that was conceived called the idea of an Omega agency that would literally oversee all the secret agencies of every country on earth. This is Russia, Chinese, Brazilian, Canadian, whatever. And uh, that is was completed by George Bush Sr. in the early 1980s in America. And it's based here in the United States. Uh, the central currency of the world, the biggest, most powerful supercomputers, space-based weapons platforms, everything is based in America <clears throat> and in space even. What we have to understand, we also have collaboration, even a lot of these weird projects with the, uh, with the uh, Russians and other countries over years. We've actually made sure that a lot of technology has been transferred to China and elsewhere. So, yeah, that's a, that's a factor. Um, what I want to do is leave it to the next. I want to I want to go on to our other callers because we get their okay. questions and we might come back to you. But yeah. what I want to do is 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 these issues should help us focus on 
the current events that we're doing. So we're going to get yeah, back to... Yeah, if you to, intend to, to, to cover what's happened on the southern border with the act of... We're, we're going to get into yeah, that, too. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm itching that. to get to that story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what I want to do now sure. is... Uh, yeah, what I want to do, Mark, is that uh, your question was very good. Well, uh, we'll wait till we hear the other callers. Prize. You know you don't have to entice me with the prize to call in. I know. That. I'm just <laughs> trying to. I want to get people to call in, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, Kyle, like, you're... Uh, yeah. Kyle in Montana, your, your geopolitical question. Now, remember, it should stay on track with what we're talking about with Tim, which is the southern border of the U.S., the the war exploding in Israel, Israel ready to attack Gaza. Uh, things are going to start rocking and rolling. In the next week, you're going to see Russia move against Kiev, probably. Things are going to get hot. This summer, this July, is not going to be pleasant. And I would say, out of this, you're going to see a collapse by the fall of the U.S. dollar, because these BRICS nations can't withstand America and the bankers doing any more of this foolishness, and many of the countries uh, of Europe can't withstand the, uh, they're pushing back against the idea of a banker austerity fascism, and it's, it's going to get really ugly by the fall, I would assume. <clears throat> Hi, Dr. Bill. Um, yes, Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to get yours and Tim's take on something here, dealing with these very various issues that you were, that you're talking about. You know, if let's just say that uh, they're com- they're developing all these supercomputers. You've covered that very well. They are they're developing these plagues. They uh, and worse and worse continually. There is a constant uh, uh, threat of war. There is a constant threat of um, economic collapse. But my question is this: if if another country such as China or South Korea, I mean, North Korea, or one of those guys explodes an EMP over the United States, and that is in their plans, then why are they setting up, like you've had Deborah Tavares on, why are they setting up all of this grid pattern with all of this electromagnetic uh, potential to do damage to people? And, I mean, if they do that, and there's an EMP, all of that stuff goes down. And then if you put together this Nibiru, Nibiru coming in, it makes sense that in some respects, I mean, it, oh, this whole thing doesn't make any logical sense, but it does. Make, it would make sense to me if this Nibiru was coming in and they knew it, that they would, they would just want life to go on just like it is for right up until the time that it all happens. Because, you know, if, if the nuclear, if the power grid goes down, the United States of America is going to be a wasteland, and that ties into Scripture, you know, because it says that they saw well, Babylon, the, you know, sit there and were burning the ship. The masters of the ship would sit there and weep over her because yeah, all you're, the you're, you're, you're right. <clears throat> you're right in a couple areas. I just want to kind of uh, crystallize this for you. What happens if anyone attacks America? America has level ten weapons. So we could fry any nation that would attack us with any weapon, even after the nation is fried with, you know, first you knock over a power grid and our satellites, probably wouldn't affect cars, might affect a lot of home communication, cell tower towers would be down. Uh, but anybody attacking us would be literally turned to ashes in minutes. Uh, that's not going to happen because these countries are all players. Remember now, the only countries that aren't players are Iran, North Korea, Cuba. Question, Kyle in Montana. Now we have Dowser in Missouri. He uh, read a book called The Most Dangerous Book in the World. Tell us about that, Dowser, and what, what's your question for Tim or myself? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hail, hail, warriors for the truth. Uh, <laughs> love you both. Uh, <laughs> Lord Sterling, a.k.a. Uh, Tim Alexander, you're, you're my favorite guest on uh, Dr. Deagle's show. Anyway, yeah, I just wondered if you... Either one of you had read this book, the most dangerous book in the world, 9-11 as Mass Ritual by S.K. Bain. The I think I read uh, some portions that were sent Peter to me. Lavenda, the author of Sinister Forces. Had you read that trilogy? My goodness. It, it was truly Tell us else about it, but I, I think some... I th- yeah, I think I had excerpts of it, but I don't think I read the whole book. Um, well, it is a it is a ceremony. You have to understand it is a yeah. ceremonial dates. In fact, it was exactly ten years the to the day. The hair on the back of my neck was rising, sirs. Now I I was just a a lowly uh, 
medic in the paratroops years ago. Uh, however, my, my father, uh, I've told you this before, Dr. Deagle, uh, yeah. he was a nuclear, biological, chemical warfare general staff officer, and believe it or not, my great-grandfather was the secretary of the treasury of the state of Kansas years ago, almost uh-huh. 100 years ago. And uh, 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 my heart is in palpitation about what's going on in this country anymore oh, oh yeah it's, it's a bizarre and and then you hear about obama the latest news i got reported on my because uh, he, he wants four billion dollars for the immigration crisis which they created oh i have oh, some news on that by the way uh news yeah, that hasn't yeah. uh, uh been made public yeah, go ahead, Jim. Uh, I picked up two interesting, uh, what I call tidbits of information this weekend from uh, two sources that I've known for years and are very well qualified. Uh, one source has to do with Guatemala. The current president down there, former general, of course, that was vetted and supported by the CIA, uh, they have begun mm-hmm. and started back in January a program of a disappearance uh, of killing uh, uh, males, uh, uh, adult males, in many, many villages in northern Guatemala. Especially native um, villages. They're killing the native men. When will that start here in Missouri? Well, uh, I think it'll be much worse than that, but it will be biological, advanced biological. Absolutely, but, absolutely. Yeah, the Bible says that there will die a plague. But anyway, this this flood of people uh, that even Governor Rick Perry uh, has accused Obama of being behind and orchestrating, uh, we now know in the last week or two information has come to light that the Department of Homeland Security put out uh, tenders for bids from private companies to handle the distribution of uh, illegal alien children across the United States in large numbers. They knew in January that this crisis was going to be upon us. The reason they knew it is they were creating it uh, no, they in actually Guatemala were and other places. They actually and started hiring these, people the reason beforehand. these women and children are left without their husbands, they're scared, and they're being told, come to America and uh, across Me- Mexico has always had a far, far tougher policies on illegal immigrants than we do. When uh, Guatemalan citizens try to cross through Mexico to get to the United States, they usually end up uh, in r- really bad shape uh, in, in some rat hole uh, 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 Mexican prison. But oh, the Mexicans all of a sudden are allowing thousands of them to ride on uh, railroad cars and uh, to the, the U.S.-Mexican uh, border. This is a crisis that has been deliberate. There are several reasons for it, but part of it, uh, you have 15, 16, 17-year-old gang members that are in with all these children, and they are distributing them around the United States. They intend to create just chaos when the global financial uh, currency collapse happens, that uh, they're, they're going to have people placed in cities all over America to do their bidding. Uh, they want martial law. That's one aspect of it. And literally, the ga- uh, there's a good article out, uh, the gates of hell have opened, uh, and the U.S. Oh, is being attacked and occupied. Uh, they're also bringing in a lot of diseases. Some of these people, they're literally uh, having to take them to hospitals. Now, that's one thing I learned. I also learned from uh, a very good source um, that in Eastern Europe, the concern is that the stay behind uh, the the kind of underground KGB GRU uh, agents that uh, you know have been. Uh, kind of in neutral for years now with the fall of the union, that they're being sleep. activated. You're talking about the sleepers. Uh, I've known this forever that the, the sleepers Soviet are being never activated went away. across yeah. Eastern Europe is the, right. the story I got this weekend. Right. Uh, I have to tell you that that's uh, very interesting information. I was also told, uh, you know, that there's an awful lot of uh, American uh, Apache helicopters, tanks, and so forth. Uh, in uh, places in Eastern Europe uh, that, you know, the numbers are way up there. Now, the uh, Putin literally, he has to take action fairly soon or 
or his own people will turn on him and the knives will be out. Uh, be it generals or whoever, Putin will not physically survive, nor will he survive as president, if he allows uh, eastern uh, Ukraine to fall and the genocide to really uh, begin in earnest. The Rand Corporation uh, did a report. This is a DOD Department of Defense connected think tank, uh, particularly connected to the U.S. Air Force. And they told the coup junta that they need to kill everyone in the eastern Ukraine that has any opposition to them at all. And the rest of the people need to be rounded up and put in concentration camps for a period of time. Uh, the Russians will not tolerate that. Mm-hmm. I absolutely guarantee you that that, that goes against everything uh, in every Russian vein, just as it would against uh, Americans. So he cannot. They, they finally have a have reached a point where they have thrown a gauntlet down that he cannot ignore. Right. Uh, he know, doesn't sir, want to go into the trap of a war. He's done everything to avoid it. But he, it's getting to the point where he's going to have to act. Then the next question, the next strategic question becomes, what will NATO do? Now, that's an insane question because, you know, you, the Ukraine is not part of NATO. And surely we wouldn't be crazy enough to want to get involved in a military uh, event with uh, Russia. But uh, you have to remember that the political class in most NATO countries are terribly compromised, just as our American politicians are. They're either bought and paid for and are blackmailed. And uh, it's quite possible that uh, we will end up in some sort of shooting match in Europe with Russia uh, in the relatively very near future. All yeah. this is connected to events in the Middle East, to the ISIS yeah. attack on Iraq. Uh, we now have Russia and Iran uh, combining forces uh, in, a, in Iraq to fight these characters, but uh, the big thing, you know, they, strategically you would think, okay, the, the Israelis have finally got the Arabs fighting the Arabs, the Muslims fighting the Mar- uh, Muslims, the Shiites versus the Shuntis, but, and, and would go with that. And certainly try to avoid a situation where the Jews are fighting the Muslims. But what you're ha- seeing now is exactly that latter thing in in Israel. I believe that those poor three boys were, were kidnapped and killed. I, th- I think it was a false flag. I think they, right. they sacrificed them. Yeah, here's what I think we're summarizing what you're saying, Tim, is we're seeing enough war and devastation rising that the world will clamor for any peace treaty that will stop it from going where it inevitably well, will, whether it's a, which is it's World a War III. Peace treaty or, or war, uh, I, no, I don't no, know. My point ball, is, is, what is, I can tell you is, what it's going to do is it's going to go through to a peace treaty to stop World War III because, is what you're laying out is, this is going to be World War III if it's not stopped by the peace treaty. Well, they're going to get false peace first, what we which is why doing. the tabernacle, the peace treaty starts in the Feast of Tabernacles because they'll tabernacle with the devil and not God. That's what's going to happen. Welcome back. That was a great question and comment, uh, Dowser. Um, what I want you to do is just call into the 888 line and uh, leave your your number and your address and so on. I'm going to select who's got the best question of the of the hour, and you're going to be getting a free uh cell phone protector that will block the radiation so at least you'll have one less thing to worry about that if you're walking around with your cell phone still receiving calls if it's in your pocket or your purse or whatever uh, you're not going to end up getting fried and of course all of our callers were guys so talking about pocket you're not going to fry your body or as it says in uh, Monty Python's you're not going to fry your naughty bits and expose your groin to radiation while you're walking around with your cell phone in your front pocket or your back pocket Uh, this is important because people should understand that we're talking about these issues because we've got to put the geopolitical military analysis of Tim Alexander in my understanding of the Hebrew feast days and experts like Mark Biltz. Um, what we're really seeing is that by rabbinic law, the peace treaty can only happen on a, on a day of Sakat, which is when the Temple Mount is sanctified. And you can sign it beforehand, but the treaty doesn't really start until the sanctification of the Temple Mount, which is also an abomination because it desolates. It allows the removal of Jews from parts of the nation of Israel and the partitioning of the state, which is against God's rule. It doesn't matter what nation it is, whether it's Palestinians. You can treat them more humanely, but you don't divide the land. And then secondly, 
it uh, allows a, an abomination, which is abominating against the blood of Jesus, which paid the price for all man's sins, uh, and puts the blood of animals back in the sacrifice, like the ancient sacrifice, which was a foretaste of the eventual sacrifice of Yeshua, the Father in the flesh, coming to die to take the sins away. So uh, it fits the definition exactly, the abomination that desolates. And we even have a man in the White House, his name is Obama. <laughs> so who's abominating? He's actually saying he's going to push the Palestinians to the, and the Israelis to have a peace treaty. And he's doing everything he can to actually start a war in the Middle East to bring this crisis about. My guess is a treaty will happen very shortly after quite a bit more blood and suffering in the Middle East. And the great danger this will explain to a global war. And... Uh, I think when Mark Belt is saying these things, I'm not laying down dates, but I can tell you if you read the signs and you put these all together, it's pretty darn imminent what's going to happen. I mean, you know, if Russia starts moving in on Kiev, if the Middle East blows up and Israel attacks Gaza, you're going to start seeing the old story in the Middle East that says, me and my brother against my cousin, me and my cousin against my enemy. And it's going to get ugly real fast. Well, you're going to see maximum chaos. And the Illuminati model, if there is a, a model, is order out of chaos. And yeah. uh, we're, we're headed, it's just kind of across the board from uh, the, the dollar collapse, the global economic collapse, the rise of austerity fascism, the rise of uh, what in reality are genetically engineered diseases, uh, this uh, border crisis that came out of nowhere on the American southern border, uh, the Ukrainian uh, war, which basically came out of nowhere when we instituted the coup, um, and now this uh, and this ISIS. Uh, nuts in their black pajamas running around killing Christians and killing everybody else. Right. Uh, and, and then, of course, the, this new war on the Palestinian people who are, in effect, trapped in the largest open-air prison. Um, it, it, it risks getting uh, Hezbollah involved. It risks becoming the third uh, Lebanon war. It risked uh, going over into Syria and becoming a general Middle Eastern war, which is what Netanyahu has wanted for quite some time. Now, will all that transpire? Well, God, God knows we don't. But uh, I, I do know that the writing on the wall is really ominous. It, it's, it's scary. Oh, yeah. Well, you're, 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 a, you're a military geopolitical analyst and historian. When you're looking at this soberly, uh, and you could say, let's say you're transported to back before the World War II or World War One. You'd have to look it at this. It reminds me of World War One in many ways. Right, it's an echo, but it's actually far more dangerous because the weapon systems, the methods oh, of destruction, absolutely. are so much more devastating and so much quicker. So, as you say already, in three days you could have devastation of Kiev. You could well, have airports. Uh, let, let, let's look at let's look at what's happening in the Black Sea. NATO has a uh, naval war exercise going on, and Russia has a very large naval exercise going on. We call them NATO exercises. What what NATO NATO has done is, is sent in a number of warships, the latest, which is a Aegis class U.S. Navy cruiser, the Very Gulf, USS Very Gulf. Um, it's one of our largest ships. It's extremely well equipped. But here's the problem, and, I, and I, by the way, I believe that the United States Navy is the strongest and best Navy in the world's history and in the world today. I have a lot of respect for our Navy. But when you put uh, nine warships in uh, a Gulf, uh, well, the Black Sea is basically a Gulf of the Black Sea, uh, that has a large number of launch platforms, be it aircraft, be it uh, subsurface, uh, surface uh, land-based uh, for missiles, the type of missiles that could be launched against uh, this um, NATO Amada are uh, the Sunburn, the Onyx, the Alexander, and a number of other missiles uh, that are either supersonic or hypersonic. Right. Uh, then, you, then it becomes a mathematical formula. Uh, you have X number of incoming missiles. You have X number of anti-missile systems. Uh, with anti-missile missiles and point defense Gatling guns and, and, and automatic cannons. 
Uh, how many rounds do you have of missile anti-missile missiles? How many rounds of cannon uh, or uh, rounds do you have? And uh, when you are swarmed attack, uh, maybe 25 yeah, 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 or 50 yeah. coming at the same time, it, it doesn't over. even become a pure numbers. Yeah. It becomes uh, uh, overwhelming the system. Exactly. Russia, For example, I have uh, this. Uh, site today uh, said that the NATO fleet will last 10 minutes. Well, and, the Orlikon Industries, which is out of Quebec, Canada, makes a, a large caliber Gatling gun type thing that shells out like 7,000 rounds a minute. But you can run it rounds real fast if you have like dozens of missiles coming at you. Well, and, so and, going to get you know, yeah, I, I have some experience with, with systems like that with, on aircraft. Right. And here's the thing. Um, you burn up your, your tubes. Uh, even if you had uh, an infinite number of rounds, you could not fire uh, that Gatling gun system, whether it's a 50 caliber or 20 or 23 or 25 or 30 or 35 millimeter. You can't fire it for very long because the tubes literally would melt, and you would have uh, they you know you would have a backfire explosion. You can only fire it for so many seconds. Now, uh, so your your systems for a battle fleet in a given area, like in the Black Sea, uh, it, it's it's a mathematical formula, and that NATO fleet and our boys on our cruiser are in grave danger uh, if something happens. Well, also, they're, they're sitting because docks there. the danger is so high, you have lower-ranking officers who are very, very concerned. They're there, literally, and their ship is there, and the men under them, that their their lives are, uh, uh, are you know, uh, are valued. And it puts a hair trigger on things, and that's very dangerous when lower-ranking people have a hair trigger in a very dangerous pre-war situation because you, then you get into uh, a, a the, the National Command Authority sometimes doesn't control the situation. Right. And uh, that's that really is, uh, what's happening in the Black Sea is quite dangerous, and it's right. really stupid. Well, uh, what's happening is the parties that be are acting like this is a game to play in a sandbox, and they're playing with serious weapons that are, you can't turn them off. And once consequences happen, it's not just getting back to the geopolitical financial table. When you have blood and guts spilled, it's going to go a long way before people are willing to negotiate. And uh, the That's problem true. is, and, and once once missiles start to fly, uh, and, and this is the problem in the Middle East, uh, there's a scenario that's triggered, and in some ways it reminds me of of the scenario that uh, locked World War One in. Um, once, well, we're running out of time, but essentially it's use it or lose it. Everything's on a hair trigger. That's and, why. And uh, then it gets out of control very quickly. We've got a get mess in the back. Middle East. We've got a mess in the Ukraine. And we have a real mess on our border. And the people behind the front man, Obama, in the White House are a big part of the mess. Exactly. You gotta, you get your, I mean, literally, folks, yeah. now's Jim. a real good time to start praying. Even if you don't normally pray, now's a good time to start. Yeah, pray, get your house in order with God, get your health and back in order and get on Nutrimeds, get yourself fit physically, get yourself detoxed, get your finances, put at least a third into gold and silver, get yourself a third into preppers, pay off as many debts as you can, get yourself ready for whatever's coming, because it's going to come whether you like it or not, and it could be two years or five years, but bad stuff's going to happen relatively soon.